back with some periphery time because I quickly found out after the last video I made by them that I somehow made a mistake in my own research trying to find what the most popular periphery song to listen to was and the internet tricked me <laughs> because it definitely was not the most popular periphery song uh, especially hearing from the fans who really like periphery so I'm definitely gonna give periphery another chance the number one most requested video, or uh, I guess song, uh, not video, is uh, Periphery's Reptile. But I have said this on many occasions and I'll state it again. I'm not cool or I don't think it's fun to do, or I don't think it's wise to do a like long song, which I just looked up the song and it was like 20 something minutes or I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes, I can't remember, but it was long and it was more of a concept album, thought, song, whatever you want to call it. And so I'm just not cool with doing that on a first or second listen for bands. Maybe eventually down the road after I listen to some other periphery songs and I get kind of a feel of who they are and what they're like, then I would be willing to do like a song like Reptile. Um, so I'm, I'm not gonna you know, do requests for songs that are like epic kind of songs. I don't like it when people do it with Dream Theater. I think it's a terrible way to introduce a band. And so with that, uh, other people gave other suggestions and hands down, the most requested song outside of Reptile was Blood Eagle. And so I'm a little bit worried because also on the last song that I did, it got partially blocked. And I guess it was gonna get blocked anyway, but according to some people, the video that I downloaded like made the pitch a little bit higher so that it wouldn't get fully blocked but it still got blocked by like some countries or something like that so it's making me worried because this is like their official video uh, for this song that I'm gonna watch and I told you I always like live more than just the audio but if that got blocked and that was just an audio song why is this not gonna get blocked so I checked just like typed in uh, Blood Eagle Reaction and many videos came up with this uh, like official video uh, for this song being reacted to so I don't think it's gonna get blocked but I'm gonna be pissed off if I do all this work again and it gets blocked again so um, I did watch an interview with uh, the uh, I think guitar player or something like that for Periphery um, who is John Petrucci's cousin or something like that, nephew or something like that and um, it was pretty interesting to hear him talk about them going on tour and what it's like to be touring with a band like Dream Theater, who's not huge, but in that realm, they're huge. <laughs> Versus like, you know, his mid-tier, what he called it, mid-tier. So that was an interesting interview. Um, I'll put the link below so you can watch that interview if you want to and you have not seen it yet. Uh, it was pretty interesting to hear him talk about it. So let's get to the song. I'm interested because a lot of people requested Blood Eagle. and. The only thing I didn't like on the first song, really, I just didn't like his voice. It sounded like uh, some, 50, some 41 or whatever it is, Blink-182, whatever those names are. It just sounded like that kind of teenage kind of punk rock kind of voice, and I'm definitely not into that. So, all the small things, not for me. <laughs> so, uh, hopefully this is a little bit different, and I'm looking forward to giving it a second chance. So, here we go. Death metal. <laughs> I like that beat. Ooh. You can see why this was chosen. Sounds more like Between the Barry and Me kind of stuff. I 
like that. It's completely different than that other song. <laughs> Ooh, that was a cool switch. I was just gonna say, it's getting a little too repetitive in the heavy metal part, but this is a great switch. Not that you were doing fine. This brings up a good conundrum. We gotta talk about this. Back to the heavy. At least you can understand what he's saying in his screams. Children of Christ? It's like Linkin Park. You're probably gonna get flamed for saying that, but he's got like a Linkin Park sound here. Like this half, like subdivision. Ooh. Nice. Legato playing. Ooh, I like that it fit with the stop. Pretty technical for sure. I like this part. Uh. This is very similar to Between the Buried Me, which both Periphery and Between the Buried Me have played with Dream Theater, so it's kind of interesting. Fading out, fading out. It's like a corn slash like between the buried and me kind of mix with Lincoln Park. <laughs> Lincoln Park being the singing. Oh, this is a tough one. This is a tough one because it brings up a lot of interesting kind of problems. <laughs> 
And I, I said this before in other videos, I'm gonna say it again, that one of the things I like about this channel of music reactions, as well as doing other things, is that it's kind of a self-reflection tool. It, it's allowing me to find out and discover why I like certain things and why I don't like certain things. And that maybe the reasons I don't like certain things is just a, a bias. And maybe some of those things are just because I'm just never gonna like those things. Uh, this is very similar to like liking food. So a lot of times when you look at something and you've never tried it before, you just have a natural or I have a natural bias against eating it. And I'm just like, oh, I'm not gonna like it. So you already tell yourself you're not gonna like it. And so when you eat it, if your chances of liking it are much, much less because you've already had that self bias. <laughs> but then there's just things like certain foods that no matter how many times you eat it and you force yourself to try to like it, you're just never gonna like it. So this is why I like this channel is because it's like bringing up like, okay, this sounds similar to this, but I didn't like this, but for some reason I like this. And for that, I don't like that, but in this case, it's kind of the same thing, but I like it here. Why? <laughs> so it makes me question myself and makes me kind of do some self-analysis, which I think is great. And uh, I think it's cool that I, I'm going to get to see the discovery of me changing uh, throughout these musical listens, which I think is great. So with that said, let's get to what I thought. So number one, don't like the singing. <laughs> um, and I know other people have commented that they don't like the singing. And this time, I didn't like the singing for two reasons, not just one. Number two, if you watch my previous videos, which uh, you can watch up here, there's a link to a bunch of different videos um, that you can see that I just don't like screaming. I just think it's not melodic, it's just screaming. And it's just like, okay, it's just so overdone and done so many times that it's just a total turnoff. The thing I will give him credit for, um, this is actually one of the biggest reasons I didn't like Between the Buried and Me, is I just didn't like his voice. It was really hard to just get into it and just look past it. And I thought he was like the weakest link of their band. And I think that's the same case with Periphery. And it's weird because I would say when it comes to the instrumentation of these two groups, Between the Buried and Me and Periphery, they're very similar because they're very talented and technical in the metal side of life. Um, but the singing, number one, I just don't like the screaming. I will give him credit though because his, his, which is I think better than the screaming of Between the Buried and Me, you can pretty much understand what he's saying most of the time. Now that might be because this is the official video and some of the Between the Buried and Me stuff I watched was him live, which I think is going to be harder to reproduce the clarity of your screaming. Um, and I just don't think even the screaming uh, rhythm goes with the music very well. It just It's just like a clash. And maybe that's what it's supposed to be, but it's just been done so many times, overdone so many times, that that part of it, just I just wish I could get rid of it. And then the second part is again, when he sings the clean vocals, which was a great switch, he seems very, like, capable. <laughs> he seems very capable of singing. It has seems like what a strong voice, especially when it hits some of those higher notes and full voice. But it just sounds bad. It's very similar to, in my opinion, Dream Theater, which a lot of people have a hard time with Dream Theater. I mean, in, in a completely different sounding voice. But they just like wish they could listen to Dream Theater without James. And it took me a long time to like James. I like James now, and I think he should be in the band and nobody else would be able to replace him. But that being said, yes, like I can get it. I understand it. And this is the same case with this guy. This is like, he doesn't sound bad in like a like classical singer sort of way, but he just sounds bad to me because he sounds like Linkin Park, uh, Blink-182 kind of sound, which it continued into the, like the cool part where it switched into like, they had that basic like driving force of uh, the instruments going at the beginning, which was like almost like a verse chorus, verse chorus. And then it went into that completely different part where it was like really well done. I thought that transition was good. His singing just was like, eh, come on. That's which is why I made that, that face. So the singing is definitely something I don't like about this band and could be like the make or break for me wanting to listen to more of their stuff. Um, but I would say instrumentally, 
damn, they that like I loved what they and they had a mix sound. Again, the best way I'm not saying that this is who they are or what, but there is going to be like uh, some connections and, and similarities between different types of bands, especially in the same genre. And a lot of this stuff, like that, the way, even the way the guitar sounded, like like not a, not a muffled sound, but it had like that corn feel to it. And I'm thinking "Coming Undone" song that had a very similar kind of feel to "Coming Undone" by Corn. And I like that song. It makes me like, I mean, I listen to it especially in the gym, and I'm just like getting down to it. This is one of those songs that, yeah, I love that heaviness. And it's almost like I wish I could listen to this band instrumentally. If you could just get rid of the singer and listen to their music instrumentally, I would probably be much more wanting to listen to more of their stuff. So uh, I think overall, this song was good. Um, and I think it was well written. I think the pieces were, trans the transitions were well placed. And even though there was some repetition, it was good repetition, more on the heavy metal side. But one thing I think it was missing, though, is good melody. And part of that is the singer. But part of that, it was like, it wasn't really a melody. It was just screaming. And then the middle, when it got into the kind of the melody, it was getting a little bit better. But overall, I think this song, which is what the more heavier side of metal or progressive rock tends to do, it tends to lose melody. It tends to lose, like... Which is why I think Devin is finding a middle ground between like metal or like uh, like heavy riffs, but he still has melody to it. Uh, this I think, um, and between the buried me, missing that a lot. Uh, which I again love progressive technical along with melody. So I would prefer to listen to these guys instrumentally more than anything. And so it makes me kind of weary about listening to Reptile, because if Reptile is 17 minutes of this, like lacking a melody, then I'm going to not like it. I can already tell I won't like it. But if it's more of a progressive, like if Reptile's more progressive, where it's like got melodies and transitions of melodies and modes and stuff like that, I'm sure I'll like it. So you guys can tell me in the comments below. But if, are there any instrumentals by these guys? that you could suggest because I would love to listen to their because they're instrumental and the way they write the song itself instrumentally was freaking awesome I could listen to that all day long but the singing and the non and the lack of melody kind of ruined it overall for me so that's kind of my thought on this please like give me more suggestions of maybe some instrumentals by them I do want to give Reptile a chance if it's not going to be like this if Reptiles is going to be 17 minutes of this, I'm not going to like it. I'll just tell you that right now. And I won't. So comment below and tell me if Reptile is more of like, has more melody and more of like a, a mix of melody and instrumental prowess together mixed well with good transitions. If that's what it is, I'm definitely going to like it. But if it's just like this for 17 minutes, I probably won't because his voice kind of, kind of ruins it for me for the most part. So hopefully you don't get too mad at me. That's my take on it. It's honest. It's what I think. So as always, like and subscribe and look for more content coming up. Peace out.